Good afternoon. I greet you this day in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God's peace to all of you who knew and who loved Tyler, you know, Nisha, Zan, Daniel, you know. I would like to say a special uh, welcome and blessing to Daniel's parents, Richard and Mary, who are watching, and to Nisha's mother, Lana, who is watching, and to all of your children, your extended family. The love of this church and this island comes to you this day and at this very moment, and I hope that you can feel it. And a very special welcome and blessing to Tony, Daniel's brother, Kyle, Nisha's brother, and Amy, Nisha's sister-in-law. You are our extended family now here in this place, and we are so blessed to have you here. Friends of Tyler who are here and who are watching, to our XYG youth group, I love you guys. <clears throat> to the Antilles school community, to the senior class. You all did uh, right by Tyler this week, and I thank you for all that you did to honor his life and this family. To the Beep family, you are not a business. You are also extended family. And to all who gather as the St. Thomas Reformed Church family and friends here in this place and wherever you are gathered in your satellite sanctuaries, our upstairs church and our downstairs church, welcome to you in the name of Christ our Savior. This is hard to lose one. Three is unfathomable. How do we do this? I've been asking that question ever since last Monday. How do we grieve? How do we deal? How, what answers are there? What comfort can we find? Three. And I thought three is a perfect number, actually. It's the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And I thought, Daniel's the father, Tyler's the son, that means Nisha's the Holy Spirit. And holy she was. The spirit, gentle as a dove. Tyler, the son, obedient, full of grace, a friend to all. Daniel, the father, wise, merciful loves unconditionally, and so very generous. We are in the presence now of holiness, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This place, this sanctuary where Daniel, Nisha, and Tyler found sanctuary for so many years. And here today we will share stories of faith with all of you gathered wherever you are. Faith hope, love, deep and abiding love for each and every one of us. And so let us do that today, and even in the midst of our grief and our loss, I boldly proclaim to you, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, to us now the comfort and peace of your presence, that in this time of deep loss and grief we may feel uplifted by your Spirit. For we know that life begins and ends in you, O oh Lord, and it begins again through faith, through hope, and through love. We thank you that in difficult times we can find the calm assurance of the scriptures, the good news that your love for us never fails, and that your light continues to shine in our lives. 
Let that light now shine wherever your people are gathered and wherever we are today. Bind us together as one. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. The songs we sing today are songs that all three of them, Tyler, sang in this sanctuary. Amazing Grace, he was eight years old when he sat right there with his guitar and sang Amazing Grace for us. Beautiful things we sing every year on our mission trip, and we sang it as a group last week with Tyler's friends, and uh, we'll sing it today. And Dona Nobis Pacham, they sang with Tyler as a duet when he was maybe nine years old. All beautifully fitting songs for today, and as we do it, I remember how sweet, how sweet the sound of his voice. Amazing Grace, you may remain seated as we sing this together. <clears throat> psalm of comfort and hope. Let these words bring comfort and hope to each and every one of you. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Forever. Forever. These three lives touched our hearts forever. These three lives had a wide circle of influence in our small island community and beyond. It is now time for us to remember and to celebrate their lives. I asked David McDonald to come first and to share his thoughts about our dear friends, our beloved Daniel, Nisha, and Tyler. David. Good afternoon. My name is David McDonald, and um, my family got to know Daniel and Nisha and Tyler probably about a decade ago, right here in this church. We uh, shared many memorable moments with them, great moments, both here and as we traveled in the States on some vacations together. Six years ago, I began to work for Beat Business and have continued not just working here on island, but after I moved back to the States of South Carolina, I've continued working for Beat Business through that time period. So today I come here maybe representing the Beat Business family, but also me personally. And to the Beat family, I'd just like to say, you are family. We cry together, we've laughed together, we tease each other, we work hard, and we've been loved, and we know we have been, because that's the way Daniel and Nisha wanted it. They believed in a family atmosphere there at work, and so I think it will always be that way, because that's the way they wanted it. And so as a family, I'm gonna say from our family to the community here, here in this building and watching, thank you so much. You've helped us through it. For two weeks, we've been embraced, we've been loved through food and cookies and flowers, but most importantly, through hugs and tears and handshakes and just your support. Thank you so much. It's, it has meant everything. And also to the families, to the Unknown families and the Zahn families, I say the same thing. You're here helping us through it. And to the families back at home who have allowed you to be here, because we know that they have your, you have their support, and without it, you couldn't be here. But you've been here working with us, getting us through it. And I know everybody would say, well, that's what Daniel and Nisha wanted. But it's easy to say that, and it's hard to do it. And you've been doing it. And so on behalf of the Beep family, I just want to say, your family, thank you so much. And so then you have to turn to how do you wrap up three lives and boil that down to just a few minutes. And the truth is you can't. If I tried, I would really fail. It's an impossibility. There's too much information there. And all of our memories are our own. They're special to me. What you remember is special to you. So I'm not going to even try to do that. What I'm going to try to do is just take away one thought that I had from working at BEEP with Daniel Nisha and knowing Daniel Nisha and Tyler and the lives they lived. But as an illustration, I am going to tell one short story that sort of reminded me and got me thinking about this years ago and what does it really mean or what did this community and what did BEEP mean to Daniel and Nisha. So the story took place right here. I was actually standing right down there in this church and I was talking about a new program that was taking place at church and I was encouraging people to sign up trying to get them to join up. I really like this program, so I'm trying to get everybody else to join in. But as I was speaking, it dawned on me that my family is about to leave the island, and all these people I was trying to get to encourage to join up, I wasn't going to get to participate with it. And I was really going to miss that. And so as I'm speaking, I get choked up. Just like I'm going to get choked up today, and probably everybody after me is going to get choked up. If the pastor didn't succeed, the rest of us have no hope. So I got choked up. And I sat here in front, and I was floundering, and I looked 
and I scanned the congregation and I saw Daniel Yanone out there sitting in the middle, playing the world's smallest violin, holding it up high so I could see it, and rubbing his eyes and essentially calling me a crybaby. I mean, it's classic Daniel, and those who've worked with us know that that's exactly what he would do. Right there at my moment, he was sort of giving me the needle, but what he was really doing was reaching out across that room, and he was helping me. I smiled, I had a pleasant thought, and I made it through it. And that's what Daniel and Nisha did, and that's what they used Beep for also, was to help others. But then the trick is, how do we help others? And so here's what I learned from Daniel and Nisha. The rules for helping others, it's simple. One, serve your community. Man, they love this community. Daniel came here as a, as a broken young man. He was embraced by the community. He found love here. He found a family here. He found success here. And he always talked about this whole island being his family. So he loved to serve the, this, this community. He served at the church. He served through organizations. He served through his occupation. He served at school. But I think what Daniel Nisha would tell you is find a way to serve, whatever it is, whatever works for you. Find a way to serve your community. Secondly, root for other people. Cheer people on. If you knew Daniel Nisha, you knew that that's what they were always doing. When we would drive around this island, Daniel would point out different buildings to me saying, wow, look at what they're doing. They're renovating there. Or look at that business over there. They've been there for 20 years. They're unbelievable. They're great people. Or look at the success over there. That guy has worked so hard. He deserves everything he gets. He was always rooting for other people to succeed. And the same with Nisha. And they used whatever influence they had in order to help other people along. But root for other people to succeed. Cheer them on and know that when they succeed, you succeed. So serve your community, root for other people. And the last part, and this was the hard part, but it's what they were so good at. When you see other people on their path, struggling, trying to get from one place to a better place, and you have the ability, help them. Help them out. That is what they always did. They jumped in with both feet, and I have to tell you, it's not easy. It's often messy. I'm sure Daniel would tell you that, that it was often messy trying to help people out. But they, they never relented. They continued on and did the best they could. So serve others, root for other people to succeed, and when you can, help other people. And that was really what I took away from my time with Daniel and Nisha and Tyler. It's what they showed me. It's how they showed me to be a better person, a better father, a better citizen. And I can't thank them enough for that. But I just want to close with one last thing. And it's the question probably many people have asked, and I've heard the question asked, why? Why? How could God allow this? Why would God allow this? And so I'm going to give you my answer. And my answer is, I don't try to answer this question. I can't figure out small mysteries in life. I can't figure out big mysteries in life like this. I had no chance. What I have to do is trust God, believe in him, give it over to him. Know that he is in control. So I don't answer this question at all. What I do is I thank God. I thank God for every moment I had, every second I had with these guys. With Daniel and Heath and Tyler. I'm forever changed. I'm forever better. And I know this community is forever blessed. And I know right now, these moments, they sting. It hurts. It hurts bad. But I don't want to chase those feelings away because I know it will be a short period of time until these will be good feelings where every little thing that reminds us of them will be sweet and wonderful, and I will be glad for that and for those moments. I thank you.
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tommy Brunt, and I was a good friend of Daniel's and father to Anna Pia, Tyler's girlfriend. Of the many people here or watching the stream today, I did not know Daniel the longest, I may, or maybe even the best. I am just one of the countless people whose life was changed and enriched by knowing him, and by extension, Nisha and Tyler. I've struggled to find the right words to say today, and I've struggled to separate and untangle my thoughts on Daniel, Nisha, and Tyler. It's impossible. The magnitude of this accident and loss to each of us individually, our families, our community is incalculable. I don't know when I first met Daniel. Um, we probably crossed paths at Club Z where he worked decades ago. We encountered each other in a professional capacity for years. Daniel and Nisha's company, Beep, is the broker for our companies. For a long time, his presence was peripheral and pervasive, but always in the background. His name was heard often and frequently in our offices. In 2005, Daniel reached out to me for more social reasons. We both had young children, and we were new parents. Daniel and Nisha invited Pia, Anna Pia, and me boating for a day. It was the first time Tyler met Anna Pia. The pictures are incredibly adorable. They were two. There was probably a few other get-togethers after that, but it wasn't until 2016 when Daniel and I connected in a meaningful way. Just the two of us, no wives, no children. Daniel was blessed with having two distinctly different lives, with the most recent one being far more rewarding and fulfilling. Daniel did not arrive on St. Thomas under the best of circumstances. He uh, certainly was not sailing in on the wings of victory. It was a challenging period in his life. His first life was consumed by self and not answerable to anyone, including a higher power. This was the life that propelled him to the VI and where he collided with reality. When confronted with his own shortcomings, Daniel rose up and reset his course. He rewrote his story. All of us have the opportunity at any moment to take stock of our lives, to look inward at our behavior, admit our faults, make amends when necessary, and begin anew. How many of us will ever embark on such a journey? St. Thomas is where he began his transformation in his life, and it required taking stock sorry, into the man that we all knew and respected. This is where he got out of self, truly met God, met Nisha, made their home, built their businesses, and a family. But as can often happen in life when we get very busy, we can forget why and what we're working so hard for. We can lose sight of what matters. A few years ago, Daniel had such a moment in his life, and it required taking stock and re-engaging with what was important. This was when he and I began talking often and frequently about anything and everything. He once again embarked on a process of growth, to be a better husband, father, son, to be better at life, marriage, parenting, children, business, at being. He took the steps to understand his part in things. This was when I began to really know Daniel. Are you busy? This is how conversations between Daniel and I usually began. A text at any time, day or night, always the same. Are you busy? I never knew what we would be discussing. A work issue? An insight about faith or God? Nisha? The stock market? Tyler? Diving? A homeless person outside his offices? Daniel had an interesting personality. He was low key and high pressure at the same time. He just knew what he wanted and was not easily shaken from a goal. He was a germaphobe, most definitely particular. He was meticulous and yet distracted at times. He didn't do politics. He lived simply, but had a penchant for splurging when it came to experiences for his family or those close to him. Daniel often took his entire staff on trips to thank them for their service. He repeatedly invited my family on boat trips or to go diving for the day. He did this with so many. Daniel loved riding his bike at 3.30 in the morning by himself. If he wasn't riding, he was probably at work or talking to the countless homeless most of us walk by each day. He worked at all hours of the day and night, plugging away often by himself, doing the quiet work that our entire community depends on for everything we need and often the work we didn't know needed being done. He had a quirky sense of humor that rarely revealed itself 
Every once in a while, he would say or do something funny that went over my head and then my brain would kick in and realize it five seconds later. In the last two weeks, I've been struck by how deeply connected Daniel, Nisha, and Tyler were throughout our community. My wife Pia and I have had countless calls and interactions with people who were touched by their presence and are mourning their absence. At every level and every corner of our society, so many are affected by this loss. Two particular conversations stand out for me. A respected member of our medical community told me that Daniel was her lifeline. When she had a hard case without resources in the hospital that needed rehab or recovery services in the States, she would call Daniel and he would regularly pay for the flight from St. Thomas to wherever the patient needed to go. Often, Daniel would accompany the person and hand deliver them to the facility and promptly fly home. I was also told that Daniel kept files on the homeless people he met. He would get their names, family, and emergency contact information and he regularly kept their important documents so that they wouldn't be lost on the streets. He knew their names, where they came from, and listened to their stories. He intervened when the opportunity presented itself. He did this out of gratitude for his life and understood the importance of service to others. He remains an extraordinary example of humility in action. It fascinates me that I never knew Daniel was doing this despite our regular discussions. Nisha, too, had her own quiet way of making a difference. Pia told me about a recent conversation she had had with Nisha. Nisha had called out of the blue to offer blankets that she made to the children at the Nana Baby Foster Care Home here in St. Thomas. Their attention and attendance to the hidden needs of our community is an example to us all. Daniel's dedication to Tyler was extraordinary. They spent so much time together that they were the closest of friends. They would often go scuba diving, just the two of them, and often invite others to join them. I was invited countless times and went on several occasions. I wish I had said yes more. Those moments are some of my most treasured memories of Daniel and Tyler. Our most recent dive was a month and a half ago. Daniel wanted to dive French cap, something that requires the right set of conditions. We got them. As we sunk down to about 90 feet on the southeast corner of the pinnacle, we could see the deep blue sea drop away from our spot. We began to hear these high-pitched whining noises, and all of a sudden, we began spinning around with concern, looking at each other's equipment to see what the issue was. And then after a moment, without being able to communicate, we all understood. We were listening to whales sing. No one wanted to breathe. We just listened in awe. We got to the boat, Daniel and Tyler were beaming. They got to hear whales sing. <laughs> the next morning, I woke up to an audio message sent to me via text from Daniel. It was him making <coughs> noises, while s <laughs> whale singing noises. And that is a good morning in whale, he told me. Did I mention he had a quirky sense of humor? Okay. Dan would call me to discuss his fears from time to time. The one that figured most prominently were about Tyler learning to fly. As any parent would, he really struggled with the idea of his son getting in a plane and flying off alone. Yet to his credit, he never intervened with Tyler and addressed those fears with others. Dan Daniel quietly made sure that Tyler could pursue his flying passion. One time, Anna Pia had flown to Puerto Rico with her soccer team on a charter flight. As they were returning, the pilot received a call from the St. Thomas Tower asking if there was an Anna Pia on board. Tyler had long ago befriended the controllers in the tower and asked politely for a special favor to say hello to Anna Pia over the radio. Tyler had the same quiet persistence and drive as Daniel, tempered by Nisha's deep reserved politeness. We cannot fully understand why this tragedy happened. Perhaps in time we will. Pia said to me, it will only make sense when we can see it from the time scale of eternity. What I do understand is that Daniel found redemption in St. Thomas, and that Daniel, Nisha, and Tyler were an example for us all. We should work diligently toward our goals, spend more time with those we love, and serve others with humility and gratitude. Godspeed, Daniel, Nisha, and Tyler. Anna Pia is going to say a few words.
two years ago, Tyler took me gently by the hand and dared me to love and experience life in its entirety. From late night dancing in the middle of the street to waving the wings of his little blue plane, every day I was lucky enough to see his smile as he braved both the familiar and the unfamiliar. He loved life. He had a passion for everything the world had to offer. From the depths of the sea to the millions of stars in the sky, he did not fear what he did not know. Rather, he was afraid of sitting idly by. I saw firsthand his boundless compassion, patience, and quirky humor. On our daily runs, I saw his relentless pursuit of personal growth. On Saturday afternoons, I witnessed his dedication to God as he sat with me in mass. And on Friday nights, I saw his eagerness to build meaningful relationships with everyone he met. He showed me what it was to love unconditionally. For two years, Tyler, you filled my life with coffee and Star Wars, with adventure and light. Your untethered happiness was as contagious as your smile. You were, in essence, my very best friend. <laughs> my freaking cinnamon apple. And there will never be enough words to describe how much I love you. It is now my goal to live as he did, without fear and with compassion. Even now, I hear him say, Patience, Anapia, do not do anything in anger, no matter how much the situation deserves it. I hope you will all join me in my goal, because to replicate his character is to be one step closer to heaven. Tyler and I like to debate religion, but at the end of the day, we both loved and strove to serve the same God. Someone told me recently that God calls souls to him at a time when their journey to heaven will be shortest. At 18, Tyler was so good that God deemed him worthy of entering the kingdom of heaven. And I know he's there. A little, a little bird told me so, literally. But to understand the story, you will need a bit of context. You see, Tyler had a thing with pigeons. Wherever he went, I would get a call saying that they'd either stolen his food, pooped on him, or outright attacked him. I thought it was hilarious. Tyler did not agree. So on Wednesday, as I prayed, I begged God for a sign that Tyler was with him. I just needed to be sure. The next day was my 18th birthday, and on our deck is a large white pigeon. Now, we've never seen pigeons at our house due to the hawks that normally fly in the area. I chuckled and got ready for school. But when I got to my car, the pigeon was waiting for me. None of my dogs reacted to it, and it stayed to see me off. It was then that we noticed that the pigeon had tags on his feet, a blue one on his left and a yellow one on his right. These are Tyler's favorite colors. Shortly afterwards, without prompting, the pigeon walked into the house, pooped, and waited for me to come back from school. It hasn't left. The pigeon Reminded me, reminded me of a saying Tyler and I loved. Everything will be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. Right now, things are not okay. But it simply means it is not the end. Thank you. Hello, my name is Erin Salzbrin, and I'm the middle and upper school counselor at Antilles School. I've known the Yunon Sons for almost 20 years now. And I'd like to start off with some thanks. And I want to think that I told the, the Yunons this, but I'm not sure if I ever did. I want to thank them for entrusting a 17-year-old me with their infant child. 
Uh, while I had several babysitting gigs before, and Daniel definitely checked my references, I had never been given such freedom and responsibility with a child. I really, you know, treated him like my own baby uh, at 17 and 18. Whether it was making him a bottle or snack, driving him around the island uh, to get him to sleep, or traveling with the family to help them out, they really made me feel like family. And even though I was so young, it was kind of a defining moment for me in knowing and solidifying that I wanted to be a mother one day. Um, I, do, I am a mother now, and I have a little boy. And I would be so lucky if he were as kind or smart or driven as, tri as Tyler. So thank you. Um, what I am here today, not to tell babysitter stories, uh, is to recite or tell a poem that Tyler wrote in the fourth grade. And I've seen it on, on Facebook a few times. Uh, the school put it up. Um, we've been sharing it amongst the school community. And even though some of you might have seen it already, I think it's really important to share. Not only because it's so powerful and beautiful for a fourth grader, let alone anyone, but also it shows you or reminds you rather what kind of person Tyler was. Thoughtful, sensitive, and one of a kind. I am a galaxy by Tyler Yanon. I am a galaxy, big and bright. I'm full of energy by day and by night. I light up the universe. I'm full of mysteries. Everybody is trying to figure me out. Sometimes when I'm bothered, I express myself like a big solar wave of energy. It destroys everything in its path, and then I explode with an ear-splitting sound. I do have enemies, but I fly right past them, and I go on the bright side of the universe, where friends stick together forever and ever. A galaxy I am. I'm here um, kind of for the Antilles community, and, and, and while they're really struggling right now, and we're all asking these whys, and as a human being and, and their counselor, it's heartbreaking to see. It's been beautiful to see the strength, the hope, and grace around our campus and our island community. And those, those, that's what Tyler embodied. You know, this year the kids had a choice and parents had a choice to come to school or to do school remotely. And Tyler showed up, and that's who he was. He always showed up. He made you feel heard and seen. And whether you were his peer or his counselor or his teacher or an adult in his life, he reminded you to never stop learning and never stop pursuing your dream. So thank you, Tyler, for that. We hope to make you proud. Daniel, Nisha, and Tyler, we love and miss you. Good afternoon. My name is Rebecca Broom. First, I again speak for all the St. Thomas Reformed Church family in expressing our love and sympathies to the families and friends of Daniel, Nisha, and Tyler. They were all very active, both outwardly on the front lines and behind the scenes in the life of our church. It is my honor to speak especially for Nisha, a beloved sister in Christ. Nisha was quiet, gracious, calm, clear-headed and smart, astute about finances, spiritually so thoughtful, and very generous in the most comfortable, wonderful way. There was a sense of peace and strength 
about her that I'm sure came from her deep faith in Christ. In the church regarding stewardship, we think of the giving of our time and talents as well as our treasure. Nisha was quietly and graciously ever so generous with all three. Nisha was a longtime member of the Women's Bible Study, and I know she helped with the church finances, but it was from serving together on consistory and through young children in worship that I really got to know Nisha. Beginning in 2010, Nisha served as deacon on the consistory, the church board, during the same time that I served as elder. In fact, we were ordained to those offices on the same day. One of the hardest jobs on consistory, I think, is secretary. And to my amazement, Nisha volunteered. I'll do it, she said in her can-do, calm spirit. She did a wonderful job keeping minutes, keeping everything straight, accurately, concisely, and bless her heart, cheerfully and graciously. Even as Nisha was recording the minutes, she was also actively engaged in the meetings and contributed her wisdom and insights to the ministries of our church. I first met Nisha when she brought little Tyler to Children in Worship, the Sunday school program for our youngest children. The Bible stories are told in a special way um, and you have to learn them by heart. It takes at least several hours to prepare to tell just one story. When Nisha learns that we needed help, she volunteered, she embraced the program, and joyfully dedicated herself to it. She learned many of the stories. Nisha was a key part of our Children in Worship program, and she was an absolute godsend to us. This became a family ministry, as Daniel would often help um, and assist with the children as Nisha told the stories. And they continued doing that together, even as Tyler grew out of the Worship Center age group. Pastor Jeff shared this email he received from Nisha in August of 2014. Hi, I am willing to go to the training, the worship center training at Western Seminary. I plan to be involved with these programs for many, many years to come. And I want to be the best that I can be for the children. Uh. We really miss Nisha when she went to Texas for long stretches to take care of her mom and dad. That was the right decision to go take care of her mom and dad, but oh boy, we missed her. And yet Nisha still helped us out one last time. Last October, Nisha and her mom sewed the beautiful satin cloths in the colors of the church here that you see on the shelves behind me in the worship center videos. They will grace the worship center that Nisha loved for many years to come. Thank you, Lana. Thank you, Nisha. Even though there were challenges in their lives, Nisha was steadfast and a really good mother to Tyler and partner to Daniel. She was an exemplar of quiet strength and graciousness, a good steward of the many gifts God gave her. I am ever so grateful that I got to know Nisha. I am a better person for having known Nisha. These are the words to our goodbye song in the worship center. Go now in peace.
go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. Go in peace, God's peace, Nisha, Daniel, and Tyler. Amen. Tyler Dawson Yanone. Ty was a disciplined but rambunctious son, a man of faith, a stellar student, a beloved nephew and cousin, a loving boyfriend, a true gentleman, my best friend, a friend to all and a foe to none. This is a tragic, sad time in all our lives. Perfect relief is not possible, and no amount of words can heal our pain. But today is a celebration of life, a celebration of Tyler's life. Today we lift Tyler and his mother and father up. Tyler lived what he loved. He loved science and astronomy. Oh, he had his nerdy side, but that's what made him so cool. He loved to dive and adventure into the blue unknown. He had a passion for flying. He was the star pupil in his flight classes, accepted to go off to college at Embry-Riddle. He had his eyes set on becoming a pilot, aeronautical engineer, or more. Tyler had untapped potential that was beyond what any of us could imagine. Now we all know Tyler was spoiled, and we all know who spoiled him, but he wasn't a brat. He used the gifts he received to their full potential. When he got a telescope, he would spend countless hours learning and teaching others about outer space. When he was given a drone or camera, he made inspirational and artistic videos I most remember his moving post Irma video, as well as his amazing XYG mission trip documentary from the DR. He had talent beyond his years. He would take his friends out on countless scuba and boat trips with no expectations for reciprocation. You see, Tyler loved to share with others, and no one told him to do it. He did these things out of the kindness of his big heart. He wanted to make the people around him happy. His positivity and encouragement was infectious. His character rubbed off on everyone around him. He was someone I looked up to because of that. The world needs more Tylers, so be like Ty. We should be grateful to have had Tyler be a part of our lives. And we should hold joy knowing that we too were a part of his life. Don't let your happiness fade away because Tyler is gone. Take that joy that Tyler gave to you and share it with someone who didn't have the pleasure of experiencing it. For now, I can find comfort knowing that Tyler is with his family in heaven together flying his plane and doing loop-de-loops forever. Our life is eternal, and that is God's gift to us. And this life is our gift to God. Tyler gave God one hell of a gift. Rest in peace, brother. My name is Tony, I'm Daniel's brother, as Pastor Jeff uh, kind of introduced us uh, at the beginning here, I'm here with 
with uh, Misha's brother, Kyle, and his wife, Amy. And from the entire Yanone and Zahn families, I want to thank you all for being here, as well as for joining us to celebrate the lives of Daniel, Nisha, and, and Tyler. We would also like to thank the entire St. Thomas community for the overwhelming love and support uh, that has been extended to us. We've been on the island here now for a couple of weeks, and I, I, it, it's indescribable uh, what has been extended to us. And, and again, want to thank you very much for that, as well as to our families back home. Uh, my family has received numerous phone calls, as I know the Zahn family has as well, uh, from the Beep family uh, through others, um, friends and extended family here on the island. So thank you for that. Your kind words, your many caring acts, your generosity, your thoughts, and your prayers have made this difficult time a little bit easier. It's incredibly, incredibly comforting to know that Daniel, Nisha, and Tyler were blessed with such a beautiful extended family here in St. Thomas. Personally, I can tell you that I've grown closer to Daniel, Nisha, and Tyler during the past two weeks through your testimonials. Your, your many stories, like those that we've heard today, of Daniel's boundless energy and his drive, his endearing idiosyncrasies, and most importantly, of his generous compassion for everyone that he met. Of Nisha's soft-spoken gentleness, her many, many caring acts, and of her loving presence. And of Tyler's zest for life, his indelible spirit, and his confident pursuit of the stars. We've all heard the saying, it's not the years in your life, but the life in your years. Well, I think we can all be thankful that and we can all agree that Tyler was certainly blessed with a tremendous amount of life in his 18 years. While their deaths were tragic, their lives certainly were not, again, as we heard here today. And I have faith that Daniel, Nisha, and Tyler will continue to live on through the contributions they each have made to the lives of everyone they touched. Until we meet again, may they all rest in peace. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, all of you, for your words. I'd like to share a reading from Paul's letter to uh, the church in Philippi. Chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. Say again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be made known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, 
whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things and keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. The God of peace will be with us. You asked me to choose a scripture and that was a no-brainer for me. Let your gentleness be made known, Nisha. Whatever is true and honorable, Daniel. If there is any excellence, Tyler. Just give me a little bit more time today. I'm usually brief, but this one is deeply personal, as most of you know. And although our families did things uh, and leisure things together, for which I'm very grateful, and Tommy, like you, I wish I had said yes more often than I did, this church is where our lives connected and intersected the most. From the very first day that I became the official pastor of this church, January of 2010, the same month that Nisha was ordained as a deacon and Rebecca as an elder, I remember it, to the following less than a year later when I received this email from Nisha. She said, for the first time, I'm seeing Daniel get interested in going to church. He's really getting something out of it. I used to think he was just going to make me happy but now he's going because he wants to. It's life-changing, you know, when this becomes a want to and not a have to. My earliest memories of this family are of Tyler sitting right on these steps with his guitar. The guitar is twice as big as he was, and he played and he sang sitting right on, the, on those steps. Singing Amazing Grace, as I said, at the age of eight, in the bleak midwinter on Christmas Eve, right over there. Don't Anobis Pachum, which you'll hear at the end of the service. He had the voice of an angel when he was young. He was an angel, actually, at least once a year in our Christmas pageant. And even that, he excelled at that. And that just, that just doesn't happen, by the way. It's good parenting. It's good schooling. It's a good community, and it's a church, extended family who loved him and who taught him and who helped raise him and who prayed for him. All the way from Tyler as angel to Tyler as guitarist to Tyler as singer to Tyler as children and worship participant to Tyler as XYG -er, to Tyler as confirmation student to Tyler is angel full circle all the way through started as an angel ended finished I should say as an angel Nisha she was an angel too literally in our Christmas pageant the same one Tyler was in she was the angel Tissom every year she only had two lines, which is a lot for someone who doesn't say much. She didn't need to say much. Her strength was in her silence. Her quiet, faithful confidence. Her greatest joy, we know, was her little angel, Tyler. And then it just flowed out from there to all the other little angels in our church, all of our children. From another email that Nisha sent to me when Tyler was about nine, she said, out of the blue today, Tyler started talking to me about his friend that doesn't believe in God. He said, my friend doesn't believe in God and that God is going to help him. You remember that time that Daddy and I were caught in the current and I started crying and then out of nowhere, two fishermen came up and helped us? 
I swear one of those fishermen looked like Peter. And then Nisha said, I don't know why he thought of that today, but I'm relieved to know that he believes. Tyler and Nisha, two of our angels. And then there's Daniel. He was never cast as an angel. You know, you could imagine the conversation, hey, we need a few angels for the pageant. Any ideas? Nisha, Nisha's on, she's an angel. Anyone else? Tyler, Tyler, he's an angel. He sings like one too. But what about Daniel? Uh, how about Joseph? <laughs> and he did. He played Joseph one year in our Christmas pageant. Elena, you played Mary that year, if you remember, his betrothed because Nisha already had the part of the angel Tissom locked down. That was her part. And the angel Tissom, Nisha, had a very important announcement to make to the man who would be her husband and help raise her son. Joseph, she said, as Daniel looked up at her, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. God is with us. Emmanuel, not just for a season, as one wise pastor reminded me. All year long, every single day, God is with us. Always with us. Daniel played a pretty good Joseph. Father. He was a good father. I saw him with Tyler. They had a great relationship from what I could see. And yes, he and his betrothed had a very difficult, long journey together. It wasn't fun all the time. I know that. But they made it together. And that journey, just like it did for Mary and Joseph, led them to new life. Blessed life. Rebirth. Better they were together. We haven't had that Christmas pageant in a couple of years. Uh, we have had Christmas, though. You can't cancel Christmas, COVID. This past Christmas was quite different for us. COVID kept us out of this sanctuary. And it had kind of become Daniel's thing over the past few years to import a live Christmas tree every year for our uh, for the Christmas season. Because, I don't know, Daniel knows a thing or two about importing things. And it stands right there, and it's gorgeous, 10, 11, 12 feet tall. Daniel texted me this past, just after Thanksgiving, that we spent together, and he said, do you still want a, a live Christmas tree this year? And at first I said no, and then I thought about it, and I said, wait a second. Yes, I do. If you want to get it, we do. Let people come and see it. Let people come and smell it. Take pictures of it in this sanctuary. And he set out to have it delivered. And a long story short, it got delayed, it got left behind on the dock, it got shipped in a container with no AC, so, you know, it was going to be a, a brown Christmas. So the tree finally arrived. Ours, miraculously, was mostly green. We decorated it. I snapped a photo and I texted it right to him so he could see how beautiful it was. And he texted me right back and he said, wow, looks really nice. See? things work out the way they're supposed to. Things work out the way they're supposed to. I want to believe that, Daniel. I really do. Last Sundays I stood up here and tried to fake my way through a service with the same way I'm trying now, tears welling up just on the edge. Because the, the loss of, of these dear people was still so raw. My five-year-old daughter sat just about where she's sitting right now with her coloring book that she had grabbed from her room from a stack of books. She grabbed it, she came down here and she sat in the pew. When the service was done, she was excited and so proud to show me the picture that she drew. 
150 blank pages in that coloring book. And she drew a picture of a beautiful Christmas tree. I do believe. I do believe. And I want you to believe too. I'm going to end with this. Last Monday when the helicopter went down, I was driving to the east end, east, where the sun rises. I haven't been in my truck for a long time with my daughter, the same five-year-old daughter, and she jumped in the truck to go with me. I haven't been in the truck for a long ride out east for a long time, maybe a year. And as soon as we got in, she said, Daddy, can we listen to some music? I said, sure. She said, play the mango song, the mango song. She said with glee. By the time we got back to the house, every single fire and rescue vehicle was racing west to where the sun sets. And it set hard that night. By the way, the Mango Song is not the title of that song. It's a song by Jack Johnson. It's called Better Together. Better Together. I do believe. And I want you to believe too. We have to. It's all we have. Faith. Tyler, you're an angel. Nisha, you're an angel. Daniel, congratulations, my friend. You finally got the part. You're an angel, too. And you three, with Jesus, have always and will forever be better together. Amen. You make beautiful things.
for that begins like this. I believe in the power of prayer. So let us pray. God, our Father, you do indeed make beautiful things out of the dust. You breathe life into each of us and all of creation. From the dust we are made into the dust we shall return. Lord, even as you said to us, do not be afraid, we fear. Even as you promised to go before us, you've prepared a place for each of us, we still doubt. And even if, as you said, I will come again, and I will take you with me, we lose hope. And even as you say, happy are those who mourn, for they will be comforted continue to mourn, to grieve. Lord, give us grace today that we may overcome our fear, that we may conquer our doubt, and that our hope may be fulfilled. God, you understand our grief, for you yourself have felt our pain. Comfort us with the knowledge that just as Jesus was raised from the dead, we too hear his voice and be raised to newness of life. Lord, I thank you this day for the lives of Tyler and Nisha and Daniel, lives which leave such incredible joy and happiness into each of us and all who knew them. Thank you for their faith and for their love and for the legacies that they have left. Help us to live more like Ty with a gentleness like Nisha and the generosity of Daniel. 
may we always find comfort in the good news that we belong to you in body and soul, in life and in death. We belong to you, O oh God. So pour out your spirit and your blessing upon all who grieve, these two families and this community. I humbly ask this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It is a tradition here at St. Thomas Reformed Church to sing the Lord's Prayer, which I'll invite us to do now. It is a tradition for us to stand and hold hands. If you are near somebody that it's okay for you to hold hands with, then I invite you to do that as well. Can we stand and sing the Lord's Prayer together? <clears throat> Merciful Savior, we commend your servants, Daniel, Nisha, and Tyler. Receive them together into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the company of the saints in light. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. You may be seated for our benediction and a short video tribute that will follow after which you may depart in peace. And if you gathered here are not able to see this after the benediction, feel free to come to this side or you can watch it later. Lord, give us peace.